Hello guys, so continuing my style review series. Today we're gonna look closer at the style of Kate Blanchett. Of course, I'm gonna sometimes use some information of my body type series, so if you're interested, I'm gonna leave the link down below. So, Kate is an Australian actress. So she was born in 1969 in Australia. Her mother is Australian and her father is American. So let's first look at her bone structure. Like if we talk about Kiwi body types, one of 13 body types, she would be a dramatic. She has very young bone structure and young vibe and essence. And overall, she's closest to dramatic side. As you might know, dramatics normally have narrower bone structure, pretty straight. We perceive them as more or less straight, elongated, can have elongated arms, torso, face, can be elongated legs. Their facial features can be also elongated. They can look more prominent. They can be angular, sharp, prominent, and pretty geometric. So let's now look at her personal bone structure. She's not necessarily looking exactly like other dramatics. Of course, they all have something in common if you look at each one of them, but Kate Blanchett, of course, has her own signature style, has her own structure, bone structure. So let's just look closer on her own bone structure. She looks elongated, mostly because of her arms and face. She has thin bones, she has narrow rib cage, so you can see that her bones are thin, probably in her narrow rib cage. If you look at the, her overall proportions, also that part, the shoulder part is not very wide. Her legs are normal length, not as long as her arms and face, proportionately to the rest of the body. So she's not curvy. Uh, basically, we don't perceive her as curvy. Of course, she has waist, she has hips, she has bust, but it's not as prominent, so we would say, oh, Kate Blanchett, she's hourglass voluptuous woman, right? Probably she has hourglass figure, but it's not the first thing that we perceive about her. We more perceive her as straight vertical line. Her face is rectangular with strong jawline and long prominent nose. Her lips are moderate size, but they are strong looking, pretty straight. Also, if we look at the three parts of her face, her nose part is slightly elongated. Her cheekbones are pretty prominent and she has that roundness around her cheeks being prominent, but that's her actually her sh pretty sharp bones of face that are coming out. It looks prominent together with her nose. Her eyes are normal set, they're slightly on the smaller side and they're hooded. They're small and a bit shrinked. Her brows are normal and she always keeps them on a smaller side, on a thinner side. I never saw her exaggerating her brows. Actually, for dramatics, that's a bit better because they look chiseled. Many of them look quite chiseled, so for them, the bushy brows, they can make them look slightly not tidy, probably, I would say, and probably a bit rough looking. The concept and vibe. I think David Kibbe, when he was writing about dramatics, he said it's very close to that Art Deco era, 1920s New York, Empire State Building, Art Deco style, which characterizes with very geometric shapes, thin shapes. Also, she played Catherine Hepburn in Aviator movie. I think that was bravo to a director or whoever chose her for that role, I think, because she really is close to Catherine Hepburn by her bone structure, because Catherine Hepburn is also a dramatic, and she also has dramatic bone structure. And I think they do have some similarities. For example, the cheekbones, very similar. Slightly prominent nose, small shrinked eyes, also very similar. So there in this movie, she really picked that up, that 40s style a little bit, and it looks amazing on her. Changing with her very feminine and sleek gown, very long, narrow, elongated vertical line, that old Hollywood glamour, or that casual men's style after Chanel decided to go for men's style for women. So that all was presented in there very, very on point. I think that was so well done for the director who actually invited her for that movie. Let's go back to her younger age. So we can see that her complexion is very light. She has very light skin. Her skin has rosy undertone. So I, th I think she's on a cooler side. And um, if we talk about 12 color analysis, she would probably be light summer or something like that. She has that ashy dark blonde hair. She has blue eyes. On the scale of darkness and lightness, she would be, of course, on a lighter side. On the scale of a contrast, I have the video about contrast. I, I'm going to leave the link down below. So on the scale of a contrast, we have zero contrast. It's like normal 
plus one, plus two, it's more and more contrast, minus one, minus two, less and less contrast. So she would probably be minus one. So not very uncontrasted, but she still has some contrast, some color in her, but it's not as big. So basically everything is more on the lighter side. If we talk about muted or clear, I think her, col her coloration is not very bright. I think she's a bit more on a muted side, but still sometimes I check her pictures when she is dressed with some clean colors and I think they don't overshadow her. Now let's look at her makeup. Her makeup is never overdone. So from time to time she's doing that classic old Hollywood makeup, but as far as she can't do that liner, eyeliner, because she has very hooded eyes, so that skin on her eyes is just basically lying on her upper lashes. You don't see that. So the accent is on the lashes. Lashes are curled and they're very prominently painted on top and on the bottom. So that gives us very striking eyes, striking glance. And also she's doing that black line in between the lashes, again, to pop the eyes up. And it's a very good trick for hooded eyes. Uh, her brows are not very high. So she also is not over occupying that space, just not to make the face look very gloomy and, and heavy that part. So keep some skin here open just to open their eyes a little bit and lift the brows. Her brows are never overly dark. Also to probably just open up the face and not to make the face look too heavy because she already has pretty strong bone structure. So with the heavier brows, it's just gonna slightly exaggerate the shadows of her face and make it slightly more severe. And sometimes she has that smoky eyes with pale lips. And smoky eyes she does with satin shimmer eyeshadow. Not super dark, not very black, not super contrasted. Mostly she's choosing colors, whether grays, off black, or natural different kinds of browns. That already looks amazing on her, or peach, peach color also. It gives her some freshness. Or sometimes she has just no makeup makeup look. It looks like no makeup. And it actually looks very clean on her, very minimalistic. She doesn't have to have that noise, you know, on her face. It's very good for dramatics. It's very clean, chiseled look. She doesn't need contouring. She doesn't do contouring because natural light is already drawing that shadows, chiseled shadows on her face, especially here. She has on her cheeks, very prominent cheekbones. And that's why under her cheeks, there's very dark shadows almost always with natural light. Doesn't matter where it shines from. It's always given her very beautiful shadows here. So her face is very, very sculpted. Her jawline also is very sculpted. She doesn't have any softness here on the chin. Again, that adds her like strongness. She gives that strong look to her. Also, her face is slightly elongated. It seems like she never contours her nose. And I'm very happy about this because that's just gorgeous feature on her. That prominent nose, that gives her face that strength. Again, that character and that drama, if we can say so. Also, I have a great video about noses, different kinds of nose shapes, and I'm showing you different celebrities with different kinds of noses, which are very actually beautiful. You can check this video. I'm going to leave the link down below. And very often she adds some blush for freshness. Hair. So when she was very young, she had that natural hair color of hers, like ashy dark blonde. Then she started going blonder. She started having those highlights and then Probably, I think most of her life right now, she is being that light, pale blonde. Sometimes she goes for cooler colors. Sometimes she go for, goes for more yellower and darker shades. I think if it's too yellow, it kind of starts being a little bit too brassy for her. I think she needs something cooler and slightly more contrasted for her because otherwise that yellowness is just smashing with her skin a little bit, kind of blurring the, the shadows on her face. So I would say probably platinum blonde or slightly lighter, fresher blonde looks even better on her. I think at some point she got that brown hair, but I think she would color her hair for her roles mostly, for the movies. So with that dark brown hair, she had to change her palette a little bit to something like more to the autumn, like more to darker and warmer colors. But as far as her skin and her eyes are a little bit from a different direction, so I think that made her look a little bit too heavy and kind of that earthiness kind of simplified her a little bit, probably just not her vibe. I think as far as she was born with that light complexion, when she keeps that being very light and 
minimalistic. I think that is her vibe. If we talk about hair length and haircuts, after she had the long hair, she shaved that off for a movie. Then she had short hair for some time. That can look pretty cool, especially if it's kept being sleek and sculpted if it's geometric. If it is slightly tousled, like on this picture, I don't think it's quite dramatic. I think it brings them slight noise and some tousledness and some untidiness, I would say so. But in the 90s, actually, that tousled, short, layered hair was very popular, I think, after Meg Ryan. So everybody was saying that it's like a Meg Ryan hair. Then after that, mostly her length starts approximately at the bob length. And uh, in one of the movies, I think she had short bangs and very geometric bob, which actually looks pretty great on dramatics. They look pretty nice with that. It's like a little bit like a Gatsby bob, 1920s, and that aesthetic really fits to the dramatics. From short bob to long hair up to here, probably not longer, this is what she has most of her life up to now. Another picture with bangs. Normally, she was doing her bangs pretty straight, which is good and pretty long. Most of the time, she tries to keep them pretty sleek or sculpted. If we talk about waves, it's more like to a sculpted side. If it's sleek, it's more to a straight side, but not tousel, because normally tousleness gives them very untidy appearance. They're normally more chiseled. Just imagine her with big rounded curly volume or huge curls like that. That probably would be a bit further from her aesthetic. Also, her parting is almost always very much on the side. Not even between side and middle, how many women do, but very deeply on a side. I think that actually looks very great on her and dramatics look very good in, with asymmetric things. So asymmetry brings them a lot of chic. So if we talk about her style in general and her clothes, I don't know if, if now she uses a stylist or no, but uh, in the 90s she looked very much like 90s. In 2000s she looked 2000s, but not quite as 2000 as other 2000-ish. 2010, while everybody was still trying to have some rest up to 2000s, I think she already ha started having a great style. She started evolving her own style in on those years, I think. So as now as well. First, let's look at her casual outfits. So I chose airport, of course. Her airport looks, basically it looks very comfy, but chic, pretty minimalistic, but cool. So she is using mostly black and white colors. She can have some very comfy suit, soft suit, with some jacket on top or leather jacket. Shoes is normally sneakers or just shoes with platform. She likes with platform and I think that this is how she compensates the, le the length of her legs, just to balance that a little bit. So it would look more proportionate with the length of her arms and with the length of her face. A lot of sunglasses, but we're gonna check that a bit later. But it's really a part of her look, a part of her everyday style, and I think that looks amazing. Jumpsuits, I'm not sure how comfy that is, but that looks very cool. I think that ju leather jumpsuit, how shit that is on her. Most of the stuff that she's wearing is very tailored and it's pretty sleek and pretty narrow vertical line. Pants that she is wearing, sometimes skinny, but most of the time it's with a regular pants or wide pants and pretty long, actually. Sometimes she goes for shorter pants, but most of the time it's long and wide. She also has loads of well-tailored suits when she goes out. And again, I don't know, you know, sometimes you just go for a walk with your dog. You don't expect to be photographed, but sometimes you kind of go to do your stuff, but you expect to be photographed. That just requires a little bit more effort. If we can see her outfits when she is walking, yeah, casual walks, um, I could see the pants with pleats. First of all, that's so great because pleats, they give that sharpness and that sculpture for the pants, even though the pants can be slightly wider, in the hip area can be slightly wider, but those pleats and those straight iron lines in, at the front, folds, I think they called, that looks very sculpted on her. If the pants would be more relaxed and unconstructed, that would look a little bit more slouchy on her, like on that outfit. But everything else on this outfit is very much sculpted and tailored. So it looks like she just wanted to take one step forward from that look to be too regular, probably, and just add some slouchiness in there, on purpose, probably. But that amazing wool blazer and everything is in light colors that really suit her 
those glasses, that sweater, like everything looks very, very cool. And overall, her looks are very chic. She could wear long sweater or just regular t-shirt, jeans, pants, classic shirt. Many things are very classic that she's wearing. Sometimes she wears hats, but not as often. I don't see her in jewelry as much as well. Cropped pants, not very often, but you know, cropped pants can look amazing on dramatics. For example, if the rest of the outfit is not little girlish. So if you balance the rest, your length, I think that looks very chic and very stylish. Also monochromatic looks, they look amazing on her. If you watch this video, Colors for the Body Types, I talked about it for dramatics. You can check. So she really loves that sometimes. She uses that trick if she wants to look put together, stylish, chic, and different at the same time. So she has those different colored suits and sometimes everything is just one color. Blazer and top inside is bright pink and then the pants. And sometimes even the shoes are absolutely the same tone, which looks amazing, which looks all together. And it actually specifically, it looks great on dramatics, on that kind of a bone structure, which gives that very minimalistic look, very put together, very clean, very narrow, very much elongated vertical line. Or that yellow scarf, yeah, it also creates that vertical line and it creates some contrast with this beautiful pastel color suit, which actually looks great with her complexion, with her skin, with her hair. Her casual dress is also nice, long, sometimes covering the knee, sometimes slightly shorter, uh, pretty narrow, that looks great. The only thing is sometimes when dramatics go too much with horizontal lines and not narrow lines, or cutting the leg like that and cutting then in the middle of the calf, skirt, flowing skirt, and cutting the body, giving that horizontal line something here, and many horizontal lines, many different patterns that can grab some chic away from them sometimes. They just don't look as clean sometimes with that. Now, men's style, also another aesthetic that looks amazing on that kind of a bone structure. They really can rock any kind of a men look. This looks, that kind of a blouse, that pants, it really reminds me of Catherine Hepburn in the 40s, yeah, in the 40s, more powerful shoulders slightly, and then that waist with a belt, and then that wide pants, like men pants. I think that is very 1940s, and I think when she's going for that, it really looks chic on her. When it's colder outside, she's wearing different kinds of coats, or that leopard faux fur bomber looks amazing, again, with the colors, very chic and slightly effortless, and that contrast that looks great. Also different kinds of coats, pretty classic plaid pattern, also looks great. Those looks are very universal, and most of her coats are without any waist emphasis, just straight, classic, regular, but in different colors, that also great. Pink color, again, bright or neutral sweaters, woolen blazer, looks very chic. Or bright, contrasted, and colorful accents. It looks very geometric, clean again, very understandable. It's not muddy, blurry, tiny, small, noisy, or anything like that. It's just very clean pattern, and that looks also great on them. It's big and it's defined, very avant-garde. Actually, avant-garde is one of those things that looks amazing on them. Now, all those red carpet dresses, they are stunning. It's pretty rare when she would choose something that would probably not be for her. Anything she's wearing is very much on point in, in the majority cases. Beautiful appliques, very narrow dresses, all that old Hollywood with long vertical line and narrow line, I think that just looks stunning on her in any form. Uh, because her makeup is on point, her hair is not tousled and very much sculpted, which is the best thing for them, that is on point. Maybe in this case, I probably not a fan of this look too much because of them and maybe dress is pretty good but with that kind of a hair too much curls and very rounded outline she looks prominent elongated and her bone structure just looks more angular in this case like every time they are too much into roundness and ruffles and rounded back homed hair like that so it's starting going in a different direction also probably not the best thing for them if they go for something too noisy. Layered and tousled hair plus some kind of strange patterns and mishmash of different things. No, they look better when they build their outfit head to toe 
all together. Her accessories are mostly bags and sunglasses. Her bags are mostly big and pretty clean. One color, maximum two colors. Nothing too strange or too girly or fluffy or with tons of different things or with appliques or with stones or with anything like that. They are very classic. And uh, her glasses are so different and I love that very much. Her old glasses though are big in size, whether it's Audrey Hepburn classic sunglasses or it's aviators or it's same kind of frames, but in different colors. All that looks very good on her. I didn't see her in small glasses though, small round like that or small 90s like that and with small bags also, so she knows. Also, they might not look their best in something very constructed and too wide and bulky so that makes again them look too slouchy in that and not tidy so they do look better when it's still sculpted and sleek all right that's it thank you so much for watching guys and let me know who you want to see next okay bye subscribe on my pinterest for 13 boards as an inspiration for the body types also you can subscribe on my instagram all the links i'm gonna leave down below also you can become my sponsor or subscribe on my patreon for some exclusive videos some early access to these videos and um, just if you want to support me and my channel thank you so much guys and i'll see you very soon bye bye